Bundled up with your family facing yet another day of rolling power outages, rotating power outages, controlled power outages. We've heard them called a lot. Many Texans are all asking the same thing. How did this happen? So joining us to sort some of this out is our grid expert, Dr. Gerald Turner. Thank you for being back with us this morning. Thank we you. appreciate it. I want to give folks some background. OK, so I want to let them know you were chief designer and engineer of two different US nuclear power plants. You have designed and developed power grid systems and you were called in to help redesign Puerto Rico's power system infrastructure after Hurricane Maria. So let's talk about the first thing. People want to know, how did this happen? There's um, a big blame game going on right now. Well, I did. Uh, I dug um, a little deeper uh, since our last time together, and I discovered that some of the maintenance um, and the uh, upkeep, if you will, of the basic grid, basic components, the power generation and so forth, um, had not been done as had been promised back in 2011. You may recall that was a Super Bowl um, um, cold blast, if you will, back at that time. And uh, subsequent to that, 10 years uh, ago, basically, there were promises made to upgrade and to improve the equipment and to maintain it and monitor it a little better for the most part. And I, I'm guessing, uh, quite frankly, given the capacity that uh, has been de de uh, declining, I'm guessing that's what uh, pretty much led to uh, the disaster itself. Not the weather, but the impact. So promises made and promises not kept. How do we get those promises to be kept at this point? Well, it's uh, apparently uh, landed on the uh, uh, the governor's desk. So th there's also already some uh, dialogue, if you will, with regard to um, uh, Governor Abbott. And uh, so it's an administrative decision-making uh, change that needs to be made in terms of people being accountable and uh, making certain that they do what's necessary. Okay, so you mentioned talking about upgrading. We've heard the word weatherization. So moving forward, what do you think that it's going to take to make sure this doesn't happen again and to get out of the situation as quickly as possible? Uh, quickly as possible, maybe it's, it's probably going to be a, a couple of days longer. We do have another, um, uh, another phase of the storm coming in uh, today, basically. So. Um, but as far as as far as putting everything back in the condition, you might recall there was a uh, uh, there used to be a saying uh, um, back in the day, basically that you um, you can pay me now or pay me later. Okay, that was a Fram oil filter commercial indicating that you could invest in what's necessary now in terms of infrastructure, or you can spend maybe ten times as much cleaning things up, like right now, for example, uh, with what's going on, the cost of. Uh, maintaining the system, repairing it, and so forth. Um, it, it, it's just uh, exorbitant, if you will. So it's going to take some conscientious um, activity and also some uh, accountability, I would say, on behalf of ERCOT and also uh, any of the governance agencies that are responsible for maintaining the system. And we've heard a lot about cost, and I don't know if you can compare this and, and at all to what happened in Puerto Rico. Uh, what, what kind of a cost are we talking? I mean, you said significant. Uh, I don't know everything that's broken, so let, let me lead with that. Uh, <laughs> everything that needs to be repaired or replaced, um, basically. But uh, it 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 could be sizable. Again, if the uh, if the uh, wind if the wind farms are damaged, for example, that's uh, that, that's pretty steep. I don't know what they cost nowadays, but they're very expensive. Uh, also, making improvements to the um, the basic grid itself, and also upgrading the generator and the capacity system that uh, will allow uh, the power grid to be more reliable for the most part. Can't give you a number, but um, typically if, uh, if you don't practice, practice uh, disaster avoidance in the beginning, you can expect that after the fact disaster recovery, you can expect somewhere between four to five times the cost, if you will, of putting things back into shape. You know, we've had a lot of people who have been calling ERCOT or Encore. Is there any anyone else that uh, folks at home need to call to make sure that their voices are heard and in, in regards into making sure this sort of thing happens? Well, I, I think the buck stops on the governor, uh, governor's desk, okay? There may be some other folks. Um, I don't know uh, the councilmen and uh, people that are in areas that do have some clout and do have some impact with regard to getting the governor's ear, but uh, the governor uh, regulates and pretty much um, uh, maintains some control over PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, and also uh, with regard to the generating, uh, the generating providers, if you will, that uh, provide 
uh, the power directly to the, your your uh, citizens in this area. So I would say, uh, and I don't want to get political in it, but uh, it, it, it seems like it's going to require that type of a uh, an intervention in order to get the attention needed. Well, we know you have the expertise. So let me ask you, when you see all of this going on, um, especially with your experience down in Puerto Rico, um, is it surprising to you uh, just to see? I mean, we're talking Houston has like 41 percent of people with power right now. Uh, none of this is uh, surprising. I've seen disasters occur uh, like this where the maintenance was not kept up or was not done in order to ensure uh, the safety of the people that uh, had vested interest in it. I've seen both of the the Challenger, the NASA Challenger, and also the uh, Columbia disasters, basically, things that could have been done before uh, the flights. I've seen this happen, in, of course, in Puerto Rico, where some things could have been done in advance, like uh, improving the uh, quality, if you will, of a grid um, that had a power system on the southern coast, if you will, a place called Ponce, and uh, that power that uh, power plant basically had burned down a few times and so forth and left Puerto Rico in the in the uh, you know blacked out a real blackout for the most part so um, I've seen disasters occur because of uh, either negligence or people just uh, kind of presuming um, you know kind of Las Vegas style just kind of betting that the uh, there won't be any problems and when that does occur for example um, there, there's a lot of regret behind that Listen, we really do appreciate your expertise and your insight. Thank you so much, Doctor, for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you.